Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So I have been trying to film this video now for the past probably four hours. It's just been raining on and off all day long and it doesn't seem to be lightening up any more than it is right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and run with it. Hopefully the audio isn't, uh Jeez, isn't uh, isn't too bad, but welcome to the uh, the final van build episode. And for those that have been along for the uh, the, the, the four part series the entire time, I do want to thank you for it. And uh, I do apologize. This video should have been out probably 60 days ago, and I should have known better to think that I was going to be able to wrap up the van by the time fall arrives. Fall is the busiest time of year for me with uh, with travel. And uh, I wasn't able to get it done, but I am ha happy to say that the van is just about finished. I'd probably say it's about maybe 85 or 90% done, but it's completely usable. I've been using it pretty much all year long from a functional aspect. Everything is complete. The only things that are really outstanding at this point are just kind of cosmetic things, a little bit of trim here and there, but I couldn't be more excited and more proud, frankly, with the way it all turned out. I have def This definitely pushed me so far out of my comfort zone, more than anything I've ever done in my life. So I don't want to continue just to ramble on. I want to try and show you the things that have changed on the outside before I show you everything on the inside because uh, a lot has changed on the exterior and the interior as well. So I'm gonna do my best to try and keep water droplets off the lens, but if there, if there happens to be a couple that appear, I, I do apologize in advance. But probably one of the, the, the biggest things on the exterior is, uh, is concerned, as, the, as far as the exterior is concerned, are the windows. So if you remember, that there was no windows here before. This was just all sheet metal across the entire van. So I do have windows now that open up and reveal a screen, which I'll show you inside, which has been absolutely fantastic. Not only do I think it, it makes the exterior of the vehicle look much better, but it's extremely functional as well. And plus it adds a ton of light when you're in the cab of the vehicle as well. So that's a huge win. Of course, uh, the awning, as you can see right here, the awning was something that uh, I honestly haven't used it a whole lot. This is probably the maybe the third time I've actually had to use it. Usually when I'm on, uh, you know, take the van places on location, I usually am only there for a few hours to sleep, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to set up the uh, the actual awning. But if I was to do, let me move in here a little bit, any type of um, camping for an extended period of time, the awning would be huge, or of course, if it's raining. So uh, it's actually coming in clutch right now, but uh, it's a Fiamma 45S awning, which has been, it, it's amazing. The quality is really nice, but boy, are they hard to get your hands on. I think I waited close to six months to get mine after I paid for it, so they are hard to, uh, to get a hold of. But Looks really good on the van, uh, both functionally and uh, once it's closed, uh, it looks really nice as well. And then as far as, you know, I think I'm gonna have to get an umbrella. Hold on one second. So one of the biggest upgrades to the exterior of the vehicle, I'm hoping you can see that. This is really hard to do this vlog style and hold an umbrella. But um, that's the uh, the CA Tune Hammerhead bumper with a set of uh, Baja LP9 lights in amber, along with, uh, I think it's a, a Warren 12,000 pound winch, which has um, been absolutely fantastic. It all works like a dream. I'll overlay some B-roll here so it's a little bit easier to see. But uh, the lights are incredible. They have this wireless remote switch, which you can uh, uh, turn on all the lights from uh, the interior of the cab. There's also an app that you can utilize to uh, turn things on and off. I also have some lights on the rear that I'll show you in a minute. But the lights on the front are, it's, it's a real game changer in my opinion. What's funny about it is uh, it's one of those things, get out of here again, that, uh, you know, when I first had the lights installed and I turned them on at night, it, it blew me away but you get used to things which like anything and now I, I want more lights. So I'll probably end up putting a couple more lights along the top of the, uh, the, the roof rack. Uh, I'm just not sure if I want to do more of the LP9s. That might be a little bit of an overkill. Maybe do the LP6s, but those things aren't cheap. So I want to be uh, cognizant of that. And then I don't think I'm going to be able to show you right now in the rain, but I'll once again, overlay more B-roll. The uh, some, uh, I think it's image dynamic, no? Image diodes, diodynamics, that's the name of the uh, lights in the rear, which is uh, very, very helpful because I really struggled. I know I've mentioned before that um, I don't have the best eyes in the world, but uh, backing this van up at night in a wooded area or in the mountains where it's very dark was pretty difficult, but installing these uh, additional lights in the back really made uh, reversing or backing at a tight spot so, so much easier. So 
Anyone who has one of these vans or any kind of van, if you have a, any issues of backing up, I'd highly recommend these types, this type of a, a rear lighting setup. Now, it was so cool to review some of those past videos. I know I had just mentioned that, but I wasn't even 100% certain as to what was accomplished in the previous video, but that last video was five months ago, and I was pretty shocked to see all the, the notable changes. And there's so much different inside of the cabin. It's probably the area that, I, that I'm, I'm most proud of because the exterior of the vehicle, I didn't really do much of that work myself. The majority of that I ended up having to uh, outsource or, or have a company install it for me but everything on the interior of the vehicle i ended up doing myself so I, I couldn't be more excited with the way it all came out so let's check it out so right when you enter the one second right when you enter the uh, the van you'll uh, immediately notice a, a lot of differences. This is the, uh, the actual kitchen galley here that uh, was, uh, was created. It was all framed out in the previous videos, but I didn't have it all, all um, what do you call this, um, closed in. But uh, I used this birch plywood to, to fill it all in and of course just painted it. I have, uh, this is one of the seats to the, uh, the, the sitting area. I've got like kind of a two person, I guess living room workstation, if you will, all set up. But this is where the, uh, the toilet goes pulls right out there. It's just one of those little uh, Dometic, I um, forgot what they call them, Dometic kind of compact, cassette toilets, I think is what they call it. But uh, it works great. I just got to put a, a little door and a little handle on it, just kind of pull that out. But I think that's great use space of that area with the seat. And then uh, let me take you in here and show you the rest. And one of my favorite additions, one of my newer additions too, is this uh, overhead cab shelf from Shuxon Vans. This thing is fantastic. It's super sturdy. It, um, it's fits absolutely perfect with this van, but it's a, it's, it's a simple product. It's just designed absolutely perfectly, but it creates so much additional storage. I don't know if you can kind of see all of this up here and it's really, really deep and it's just all kind of, a, I don't want to say it's wasted space, but if you don't put a shelf up here, I guess it is kind of wasted space, but nevertheless, this allows for a lot of storage inside the van. A lot of times I put clothes or any kind of just a soft goods up here that can't really rattle around a whole lot. This is just a fantastic area to put something like that. So uh, this is one of the things, like I just mentioned, I put it up a few months ago and it's been a, a, a tremendous uh, space saver so far. Now this kitchen galley is probably one of my favorite aspects of this van. I don't do a, a great deal of cooking. I'm a pretty <laughs> basic guy when it comes to, a, to meal prep. I usually find a, my three or, or five things and that I, I really enjoy and that I can make well and make very quickly. And I just kind of put them in a rotation and I just eat them constantly. So I didn't really need a, a real robust kitchen setup, but my wife definitely wanted something a little bit nicer. And I'm really happy to have been able to uh, kind of create this in a, in a way that uh, she's happy with in a way that, uh, that I like as well. But this is something that uh, I'm really proud of. This was uh, the, uh, in the last video, this is when I was creating this. And this is kind of the, the, the finished product right here. And um, I ended up putting some, some tile up here on this wall just to kind of uh, try and, what do you say, I guess distinguish the kitchen area from the, the, the bedroom area because, you know, it's a, it's a van. So space is pretty limited. So I thought that tile would kind of break that up a little bit. And I got the kind of tile backsplash here, this area right here, tiled halfway. I'm not sure, certain if I want to take the tile all the way across just yet but that's just the way that I, I have it set up right now. Now, one of the most daunting tasks of this entire van build has definitely been the, the electrical uh, aspect of it all. I have learned a ton and had some amazing resources that have helped me and kind of guide me along and tell me when I'm, I'm messing things up or when I might potentially be uh, uh, burning my van to the ground. But I had a lot of people help me out and very grateful for that. But I actually ended up finishing up a lot of these electrical outlets just in the last uh, month or so. And I'll show you exactly what I ended up doing. But this one right here, let me turn this around. So this is the electrical outlet by the kitchen area, uh, GFCI outlet. We've got Christmas lights plugged in just to make sure that they were working and plus add a little bit of holiday cheer to it all. I also ended up putting this on. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is a switch to the water pump that of course push, pushes the water through the, uh, the, the faucet right there. And the reason that that was important is because I quickly found out after numerous trips where if the water pump is always on, well, one, if you wanted to turn it off, I had to crawl underneath the bed or crawl or go around to the outside of the exterior of the vehicle and turn the entire uh, or pull the fuse out of that line, which is kind of a pain in the butt to do that every time. But if you're not parked perfectly level, and let's say that the water in the, uh, the, uh, the fresh water tank isn't completely full and that water kind of runs to one side of that tank, then the water pump thinks that um, 
it needs to be pushing more water or it starts to lose that compression and then the water pump will just run and run and run and i can't tell you how many times i would um, you know go off to uh you know photograph a mountain or waterfall i come back to the van like six hours later and that pump has been running the entire time and that thing gets hot when it's been running that long so it's kind of dangerous plus you'll burn out your water pump so i wanted to put a switch on it that way whenever you need to use a sink you just flip the switch and when you're done you turn it off so for the actual walls here i ended up using i think this is i guess what is that three inch strips of of poplar and i stained it this kind of natural color to get this kind of variation right through here and i and i went to the store it was actually really hard to find all this wood um, there's you know wood's expensive right now and there's kind of a shortage as well but after about a hundred different trips to many different Lowe's home improvement stores all over the state of North Carolina, I was able to finally come up with enough wood and different variations. I didn't want it to all be light. I didn't want it to all be dark. So I wanted it to have a little bit of a subtle variations. I think that this side actually looks, whoops, I just knocked one of my lights right off. I think that uh, this side looks a little bit better than, than this side does. But um, it was a rather difficult task to create this. I ended up putting this kind of black backing board um, all across all the walls and then putting the strips of wood up with a tiny little gap between them all so they don't squeak at all because that would drive me crazy little rattles and squeaks of like the bane of my existence they drive me absolutely bananas so i wanted to make sure that there was a a little bit of a gap plus i like the way that it looks as well but that's what i ended up doing across um, all of the walls i'll show you a little bit more detail right here as well so this is the wall that i think looks best all right through here and if you if i zoom in a little bit here you can really see the the stuff the very subtle gap between all of the pieces and i really like the the way that that looks as well and of course this right here i shouldn't say of course but this right here is uh the light switch for the uh the, the dimmers or that's the dimmer i should say and then there's the on and off switch and then another electrical outlet right there these are some uh, lights that uh, turn on at night and I actually put them too close together my wife said they should be much farther apart so I have to switch that right there and then this up here turns on the uh, the inverter on and off as you can see if I show you the lights right there that's on and that's off so that will turn these electrical outlets on and then this right here is the overall charging or just a lot of the specs in the overall electrical system right there just a real quick rain update it has not stopped raining at all if anything it's raining even harder now i hope the audio isn't complete garbage in this video but um nevertheless got, got to get it done but i want to show you these windows because i really like these windows a lot let me just shut this door here and there's oh actually this is one of my favorite aspects of the entire van build is this strip right here this serves no purpose at all except for aesthetics but it was you know carrying on that same theme the three inch poplar strips but i was able to, to curve it around right here and right here and i think that just pull it over here i think that looks really really good like i said no functional uh purpose at all I just think it looks really good. And uh, that's something that uh, I'm pretty proud of. But these windows, um, the, so it was, it was either these windows or those C.R. Lawrence windows, but I really, really like these windows a lot. I mean, I think the C.R. Lawrence windows are, are nice as well. They do pop, the C.R. Lawrence windows pop out a little bit to where they'll block rain, which would be a nice touch in, to, in today's scenario. But, um, oops change the aperture but uh I, I like just the overall look of these windows i think these are a little bit less expensive as well i forgot the name of these windows i'll put them on the uh on the on the screen somewhere here that you can check out but they they open up just like this little little latch at the bottom and then they slide open and then i got a screen right through here and what's really cool is that uh at night with the fan in the back if you put it on exhaust turn the speed up a little bit and crack one of these windows the amount of airflow that that exhaust fan in the back pulls through it's amazing i never in a million years expected that but uh, that's been really really nice it create really good airflow when you're resting at night i'm a real hot sleeper so i have to have really cool conditions to sleep in and this has definitely helped that now as far as the seats are concerned i built these seats out of um, 8020 aluminum which like i pretty much built the entire uh uh, skeleton of the uh, interior of the van out of the 8020 aluminum which I think is extremely easy to work with it's a little bit pricey and it's a little bit hard to get just from a, a waiting perspective you really got to plan in advance because 
some of those parts take months to arrive, but um, I built both seats out of 8020, and I had uh, one of my wife's friends create these uh, these custom uh, leather seats, um, vegan leather. My wife's vegan, so they, they had to be vegan leather, but honestly, they're extremely comfortable. They look really nice as well, and uh, like I said, they're built just for this uh, these uh, dimensions. But I got a, a seat uh, here, and I got another one over there, and uh, plenty of leg room. You know, I'm six foot two, and I've got plenty of room to, to kind of sit down and stretch out. And what's really cool is that if there isn't someone on the opposite side, it's very comfortable just to kick off your shoes and kick up your feet and kind of stretch out a little bit. But having a, a dedicated workstation and a dedicated area to, to eat was extremely important to me. So I wanted to make sure that I had an area for that. And plus, I got another one of these um, large windows right here. So you get a lot of natural light. So I absolutely love the way that this entire area turned out. This is the, the table setup I used right here. This is just a, a marine uh, slash kind of RV table setup. It, it telescopes up and down, but I really didn't need it to, to move in different directions. So I ended up uh, mounting it here just so there wasn't any kind of wobble to it at all. And then I just ended up using, um, I forgot what kind of wood this is. I think it's just your, your, oh, it's actually, it's just your basic blonde pine. And I just ended up uh, staining it. I'm not super excited about it, honestly. I kind of wish it, or kind of want it to match this. This is black walnut of the kitchen countertop. So I actually might end up changing this in the future. Now, as far as a couple of things that are not finished just yet, and uh, what probably the, the biggest thing, and it's not a, it's not something that I, I absolutely need on every single chip, every single trip, but it would be a nice to have. It's not a must have or a need to have situation, but you might've noticed that the, the ceiling is not finished up here on the driver's side at the very top. And I left that open for cabinets. So talking to a couple of different companies about creating cabinets for, for me, I, uh, I don't know what it is about the cabinets, but I, I feel a little bit uh, outside of my wheelhouse with that as far as, you know, the best way to mount it and as far as creating it. I just feel like that's out of my scope of abilities. Um, I know I've really accomplished more things and I never in a million years thought I could do myself in this van. But for some reason, that just feels like something that I might need to pay up for. But I'm talking to a couple different companies about creating that. But I left that area open because I'm not 100% certain as exactly how I will be mounting those cabinets. So that is open right there. That's why these um, uh, switches for the inverter and for the, uh, the, the, I guess, the power system monitor, all of that's just kind of dangling out of that area up there because I ultimately want those to be inside of a cabinet. I don't want those exposed all the time. I want to be able to open a door to be able to access those kind of things. So that's not, uh, the, the cabinets of course are not installed just yet. So I'm hoping I'll have those in, I, <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll have those, that decision made and the products delivered and installed here within the next uh, month or so. But like I said, it, it's not stopping me from traveling or anything like that. I just end up keeping some stuff in, 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 you know, milk crates and, uh, not milk crates, little plastic crates underneath this, uh, secondary seat because the toilets under the other seat. Uh, that's behind the driver's seat in the, the living room area. And then uh, what else? I want to put a heater, one of those diesel heaters under the, uh, the passenger seat. There's a, a little cavity there that's empty that a lot of people put heaters. So I want to do that because I've spent a, a couple pretty cool nights. I mean, nothing crazy in the, uh, the mid twenties uh, up in the mountains quite a few times uh, to, uh, Fahrenheit. And it gets pretty chilly in here. Now you really got to bundle up, you know, you, I've got one of those little, uh, uh, portable, what do they call them, little buddy heater things that use the, uh, the, the little camping uh, propane tanks. And, and that works really well, but of course it's not a, a real permanent solution. That's good to just kind of knock the frost off in the morning, but uh, it, it, it's better than nothing, that's for sure. And something that I failed to mention, speaking of uh, fuel and propane, is how this stove is powered. And of course, sticking with the theme, just like with the uh, the water solution, I wanted to make sure that this was uh, as easy as possible. I didn't need to have a, a giant propane tank. So I ended up creating this area here that's got a space for two two of those kind of, um, uh, I think they're one pound tanks. I'm not 100% certain the, the size tanks, but your standard kind of camping tanks. And I can store two of them in here, and then there's the hose right there. So whenever I I go on trips. I always have two with me and I have one hooked up. All right, back to the things that I still need to do. So I just mentioned the cabinets up top. I need to frame out this seat and I want to put um, either one big drawer that pulls out here, or maybe two smaller drawers. Right now, this is that, that thing that I call a milk crate. It's just a little plastic crate that I just store, you know, um, extension cords, paper towels, the grate for the sink, some coffee mugs, French press, some uh, pots and pans, things of that nature. 
But um, like I said, it's not stopping me from anything. It'll be a nice to have to be able to just pull it out and uh, pull, pull out two drawers. It'll add a little bit more functionality, a little bit more organization. And I wanna do the same thing back here as well, and I'll show you. So this area right here, I want to be able to, to or I want to build three drawers that pull out here that stack on top of each other. So one, two, three, that all pull out to about this area right through here. I think that's gonna add us some additional area to, to store just kind of whatever random things. You'd really be surprised how many things you actually need to stay in a van, you know, for an extended period of time for a couple of days. And organization is really key. And then one of the last things that I want to do, and once again, this is purely just aesthetics. It serves zero function at all. And it's really just to cover up these back doors. I've got a couple of, um, I don't want to call them friends, I guess just acquaintances, people I've spoken to before who have all installed windows in the back of their Sprinter. And they all said the same thing. They kind of wish they wouldn't have spent the money and time to do that because they end up just covering them up all the time. I like the way they look, but I think I would end up just covering them up all the time as well. So I think I'm just going to do this kind of same solution that I created all the walls out of and just kind of cover up that back area. I would like to put some speakers in that top area or some kind of speakers back here because the, the audio in these vans is pretty poor. No speakers back here, just speakers in the cab of the, of the vehicle and they're rather subpar as well. But uh, I think that's really the, and, and of course this is, these vans I think, uh, van builds, it's really never finished. Yeah, there's always a, a million things that you, uh, or I shouldn't say a million, there's always things that you uncover that you want to add to uh, to the overall process as well. So a common question I get asked is how long I've been working on the van for. So I purchased this van in, I believe it was September of 2020. I really didn't start working on it until November, December of 20, I guess, actually it was probably October, November of 2020. So I'm about 14 months working on the van as of now, which is basically uh, mid to late December. So it's about 14 months, just on and off here and there, in between trips, on the weekends. I would say there's very, very few days where I actually worked on the van the entire day. So it was just kind of picking at it here and there to, uh, to accomplish, uh, to get everything to this point. Sure, and there's still a, a few things to do, and there'll always be new things that I, I come up with, but I'm really, really happy with uh, the, the state that the van is currently in. It is super, super comfortable to, to stay in. I, I feel safe in the van. It, um, I really haven't had any issues with the van, knock on wood, but um, I feel very fortunate to be, it's, it's something that I've always dreamed of to, to be able to just go to a specific location and not worry about having to get to a hotel or you know book a hotel that might be a, an hour or so away from where you're, you're uh, photographing, but just to be able to just walk back to your car and stay in it comfortably. It's much more comfortable than my truck that I used to stay in, so I'm very grateful for that. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I do just wanna say a real big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So for all those that have shown enough interest in watching these four van build episodes. It really does mean a lot to me. When I first made the very the, the very first video in the series, this is before I even had the idea of creating a series, I thought to myself, why in the world is anybody gonna really watch me, someone who has no clue what they're doing with the van, kind of stumble my way through this process. But sure enough, it, it seems like there are some people out there. So for those of you all who have uh, stuck throughout this series this year, I really do appreciate it. it. It means the world to me. And I'll put a link in the description below to uh, the playlist for the entire Van Build series uh, if you're interested in checking that out or re-watching any of those. It's actually pretty cool to see the very first episode. And, and there's some things in this video that I didn't mention in the previous videos about like what is actually on the roof. So if uh, you want to check that out, I think that's in the second van build episode where I actually take you up on the roof and show you the solar panels and all the, the platforms that I can photograph from up there. 
it's all pretty cool as well. So um, I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And I will, as I continue to do more things with the van, this will be the final van build episode or I should say dedicated video, uh, but I do uh, have a Instagram highlight that documents the entire van build um, progression from start to finish. And I continually update that as I do things usually on the weekend. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. But uh, if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.